Income tax 2023-2024. Business expenses interest. Get ready and some coffee so we can lessen the sting from the IRS smack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, you know, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers Listed Property Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements have an income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Noting the Schedule C rolls into line one income of the formula. The Schedule C itself, however, basically an income statement as well, having business income minus business expenses, which you could call business deductions, resulting in, in essence, net business income, which what is what rolls in from the Schedule C to line one income of the formula. The formula outlining the Form 1040 calculation, this being the first page of the Form 1040, Schedule C ultimately rolling into line eight, Additional income from Schedule 1. This is a Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income part number 1. Additional income Schedule C finally rolling into line 3. Business income or loss. This is the Schedule C. Profit or loss from business having an income statement or profit and loss P&L format. Income minus expenses. The expenses generally having the most different types of things in that category and is our point of focus at this time. So now we're looking at interest. So you can generally deduct as a business expense some or all interest you pay or accrue during the tax year on debts related to your business. Now, sometimes interest itself can be a little bit confusing. So just the idea of interest can be compared to basically like rent, rent for the purchasing power of money. In other words, if we purchased an office building, then you would expect the rent payments that we pay for the business that we're doing in the office building to be a deductible expense. However, of course, if we rented an apartment or something, a house that we are living in, then because that's personal, you would expect that the rent related to that would be a non-deductible uh, situation because it's personal versus a business situation. Now, if we took out a loan, then we're basically renting the purchasing power of the money. So we, we're getting money. So say we can buy equipment in the business. The equipment is something that we need for the business. We couldn't get the equipment without the loan and therefore the loan is a business loan and therefore the interest on the loan, the renting of that purchasing power of the money that we spent to get the equipment, uh, you would think would be a, a deductible item. So the idea with interest then 
you can kind of compare it to the concept of rent and we're renting the purchasing power of money and of course if we use that money to purchase things like equipment you would think that the interest needed to do that would be deductible now it gets a little bit more confusing than that sometimes because for example if we want to take out a loan from the bank the bank the bank might say hey look we need some collateral on that loan because we're not totally confident you're going to pay it back now hopefully we can put maybe the equipment as collateral because we're going to purchase equipment for it and if we default on the loan then maybe they can recall the equipment or, or go after the equipment in some way but oftentimes the small businesses biggest asset that, that the uh, bank will feel comfortable with as securing the loan is the home right so you could end up with these situations where for example you took out the loan in order to buy equipment but you took out the loan from the bank and the bank uh, wants collateral and they only want to accept your personal assets as collateral like your home and and again you would think that the purpose of the loan in that case is still business related although it's being secured by a personal item alone so it can get a little bit tricky when you think about the collateral situation all right that said so interest relates to your business if you use the proceeds of the loan for a business expense now note that when we're saying the interest on the loan that of course does not mean that we get the loan the full loan payment as something that is deductible so in other words it's only the interest portion if we're paying back the loan and we pay like three thousand dollars back but only 500 of the payment was interest right only the 500 that is the interest is deductible the other side is paying down the loan which would be a reduction to a liability which would be a balance sheet account that we don't typically see in the schedule c because it's basically an income statement format also note that you might be paying interest on your home and you might be using the home in part for business because you have a business office we might talk more about that in future presentations but that comes up fairly commonly with a schedule c type of business in which case part of that interest that you're paying might be deductible on the schedule c but also part of it might be deductible on the schedule a because the home is the exception to the general rule where expenses are usually those things that you had to consume in order to generate revenue right the home you might be able to deduct the part of the interest on the schedule a as well so you, you can't deduct both you can't take a double deduction but you might have to split the interest up between what's on the schedule c and the schedule a okay so it does not matter what type of property secures the loan so notice it's the purpose of the loan not the property that is securing the loan because if i bought the, the got the loan in order to get the equipment buy the equipment then again it might be secured by something personal but I'm, I got the loan, you know, for business. So you would think the loan was a business loan and therefore the interest possibly deductible. You can deduct interest on a debt only if you meet all the following requirements. You are legally liable for the debt. Now, this seems obvious. Obviously, if I took out the debt, then I would be legally liable for it. But you can imagine kind of funny structured situations where you're not actually legally liable for the debt if you're trying to do something somewhat strange and of course if you're not liable for the debt then you shouldn't you would think it's not actually kind of like your loan and the interest might not be deductible both you and the lender intend that the debt be repaid so again ob usually this is obvious if you take out a loan from the bank then the bank is going to expect that you're going to repay the loan but you can imagine something being structured and you're saying okay it's a loan and i'm going to receive money in in a loan uh, type of situation say from a family member or something like that where, where you might see something like this happen but there's really no intention that you're going to pay it back right in which case it's not really a loan uh in that case it's like a gift or possibly in some scenarios it could be like an income uh situation that has been structured like a loan but there's no real intent possibly for the loan to be repaid so you and the lender have a true uh debtor creditor relationship meaning it's a normal uh type of loan generally 
So certain taxpayers are required to limit their business interest expense deduction. See the instructions for Form 8990 to determine whether you are required to limit your business interest expense deduction, who is required to file Form 8990, and how certain businesses may elect out of the business interest expense limitation. You cannot deduct on Schedule C the interest you paid on personal loans. So again, the big personal loan is probably the home, which you can't deduct on a Schedule C, which makes sense because it's not a business expense. You didn't need to pay the interest on the loan for the home as in order to generate revenue. It's a personal type of expense, but you might be able to deduct it on the Schedule A because that's the exception to that general rule. An, a loan on a car note, then, uh, if the car was... For business purposes, you'd think possibly you have a, a deduction there. If the car is a personal car and you're paying interest on the loan and it's not used in the business, you would think you would, would not be able to deduct the loan uh, in that situation. So uh, if uh, a loan is part business and part personal, you must divide the interest between the personal part and the business part. This is most common with the home loan which might still be deductible on the Schedule A, but part of it because of the home office might be deductible on the Schedule C. You can't double deduct, but you might be able to break out between the Schedule C and the Schedule A. Example, in 2023, you paid $600 interest on a car loan. During 2023, uh, you used the car 60% for business, 40% personal. So you are claiming actual expenses on the car. So remember, if we have a car... The questions that come up are, uh, is it a business expense? If it's business related, are we taking the mileage method or are we taking the actual expense uh, method? And is the car used personal? What's the personal versus business, which we might calculate by the miles? We're saying it's 60-40 business uh, versus the personal. So in this case, we're taking the actual expenses because if we weren't taking the actual expenses, you would think possibly this might be included in part of the mileage calculation, right? But if we're taking the actual expenses, then we're, we then that's where we're at. So you can only deduct 360, which is 60% uh, for the 2023 on Schedule C because we're taking the business portion of the interest paid, not including the personal portion. The remaining interest of 240 is a non-deductible personal expense. More information. Additional items to consider are shown below. So how to allocate interest between personal and business use. A limitation on business interest. So when to deduct interest. Uh, so obviously how to allocate the interest. We just looked at a, a scenario on that. There could be, you know, you're going to use some kind of ratio calculation to do that. Possibly with the mileages. Limit on uh, business interest. When to deduct interest. Note that. Uh, usually you're going to think you deduct the interest basically uh, when you pay the interest, but you also could have some accrual concepts in terms of when you're going to pay uh, the interest versus when you incurred the interest. And you have similar things that could come up that we saw with like prepayments, for example, meaning you can imagine ideas where people are saying, I need to deduct more up front because I want to have lower income this year, how can I do that? I can try to prepay things, possibly prepaying interest, which again, you're going to run into problems because that tax code is going to try to stop people from manipulating when they pay things to manipulate when they're going to pay the taxes. So the rules for a below market interest rate loan. So note that when you have a loan, uh, typically you would have a market rate in the loan. In other words, if you got money from the bank, the bank is going to be charging you interest on it. If you have a situation where you're receiving money and you're paying it back over a year into the future, you're paying it back over five years or something like, or in five years or something like that, if, if there's no interest included in the amount of repayment of the loan, it doesn't make any logical sense. Because from an arm's length transaction, if it wasn't that you got the money from like a relative or something like that, in an arm length transaction situation, the only reason you would get a loan is because you're going to pay it back plus interest. So, so then if you have, you can imagine a structure of the loan where there's no 
there's no interest being paid back and that would be a below market value interest situation where you might have to impute the amount of interest that would be calculated or if it's a related tra transaction that could throw in complications as well in terms of what's the structure of this loan versus like a gift or something like that. So this is generally a loan on which no interest is charged or on which interest is charged at a rate below the applicable federal rate. 